well, it's a good job I bought my old camera with me because I'm having all sorts of camera problems with my current one. Um, it's Tuesday and I'm loading a posse in Norwich, loading a load of glass to go down to Tilbury. So I thought I'd just bring my cameras with me and maybe over the next sort of couple of weeks try and put something together because I'm not doing a full week this week. So it's a good job I bought this one with me. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with my other one. I'm trying to charge it up and it seems to be getting really hot and, and the battery ain't working and all sorts. So uh, there we go, I better just do the window up before uh, old matey comes back. But he's loading out the shed there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Nice big pile of glass. Uh, so it should be a nice, simple, straightforward day, but whether I can actually film anything or not remains to be seen. <sighs> Never mind, these things are sent to test us, aren't they? So it's 24th of May. Incredibly looking out there. It's not the best, is it? But it's doing the garden and my allotment a world of good, so I'm not going to complain too much. Um, this, <laughs> excuse the shakiness, being as this is on a on a base for time lapses. Uh, I don't know what he's doing now. Um, anyway, I'll try and see what I can put together and and uh, go for there. <laughs> might might not be too much. We can't get my camera working. Oh, flipping heck! Hey, well worth replacing, eh? Hey? <laughs> right, finally the camera seems to be working. Ah, oh, long last. So, just waiting to go in the shed here at Tilbury, which is obviously full of glass. Uh, these trucks, as I'm working for Tannertons this week, they've got, uh, I don't know what, uh, they like um, sensors to tell if you're, if you're going over at an angle, if you're tipping and stuff like that, and it brings out a warning. And the one on this truck is so sensitive driving around a roundabout, it starts going off in the cab, beep, 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 and it's really, really annoying. Um, so I'm gonna have to give him a call and just see if there's any way of adjusting the parameters or something or other, because even just going to get diesel this morning, driving around the corner at about five mile an hour, it starts saying, you know, tip warning. Um, and I've had to cover up the little red light that keeps flashing, otherwise I might end up with epilepsy. It's going off that much. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Anyway, I'm hoping to do a bit more filming now. Uh, now we're finally up and running, so we'll see uh, see how it goes. Well, no idea if this is actually working or not. It seems to just keep turning itself off. I don't know. Maybe I've got a blooming dud. Anyway, I've tipped. It's got to reload now. Where well, I used to load soya from uh, many years ago. How is there a tilt warning when I'm in a straight line? Just I'm going over a bump. It's unreal. So I just got to remember how to get bridge up here.
Ah, well, I've loaded Norwich. And to get to Tilbury, I've got the choice of the A11, which is where I am, with a stretch of roadworks, or get on the A140, which a manhole cover's collapsed, so there's temporary traffic lights along there, right by roundabout, which will really stack up. And then you've got Coptock Interchange, uh, Ipswich, and then you've got a whole heap of roadworks at Colchester. So, no matter which way you choose, you can't really win. So, I thought I'll, I'll go A11, because at least it's a bit easier. Less roundabouts-ish. So, I was up at Norwich at six o'clock when they opened, because they start fairly sharpish normally. And there's Colin in front of me, and it took an hour before before they even got to me. So, uh, it was well worth getting up nice and early to go and do that. Never mind, I'm getting paid to sit there, I suppose. But I was just hoping to beat all of this. Yeah, there we go. Such is life. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, another easiest day down at Tilbury. Tip there, reload Tilbury. Back up to Hawley. Let's just see if. I don't know what, what the, what's going on with my camera, but it's just, I've been trying to film. I don't know if it's been filming or not, but I don't think I've been pressing the wrong button to turn it on, but, oh, maybe I have. <laughs> what a shambles. So I think this is just gonna, I think this is gonna be an amalgamation of several weeks of work, because it's a bit on and off work for the next few weeks with what I'm up to. So, uh, I, I have no idea what this is all going to come out like. <laughs> uh, but I've got a day off tomorrow for a medical, for my, for a provisional licence. Which I'm sure you can guess what it is. Um, and I've got a few plans for a little bit of drone footage around the Orwell Bridge, because it's at Ipswich. And I've been sort of thinking about it for ages and uh, toying with the ideas of how to do it. So, I'm just gonna see how it comes out, really. As long as the weather's good. Right, let's see if this is gonna work today. <laughs> <coughs> I think so, I hope so. I've turned it on, it seems to be recording. Potentially everyone's a winner. So I reloaded Tilbury. Let's come down to Hawley Blockworks. Uh, I can't remember, obviously, because I'm like that. I've done Sugar Beet out this way, but you actually go right the way through Hawley itself. And I can't remember if I ever filmed that or not. But this is a slightly different route. So, and it's changed a bit because they've built some houses, and so I thought I'd film it. It's just the crazy jet set lifestyle that I lead. I've just spotted a truck at Ipswich on my break called Go Fetch Transport, um, which is interesting. So I don't think anyone else can actually legally use the name Go Fetch. But it, it, it's, your, it's your usual, uh, without mentioning the name of the huge multinational internet seller that has destroyed bookshops, it's pulling one of their trailers. <laughs> I, I know that's going to leave you guessing. I have anything against uh, huge multinationals destroying bookshops and various other small sellers and publishers of books. No, 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 don't have anything against that at all. Anyway, this gets a bit interesting through here. I thought that chap was wearing a skirt then, it's just his jumper. Well, I'm calling Harry up. Oh, 
Come on, Big Daff. Look at that 440 grunting. When I weighed in this morning, it's bang on 14 ton exactly with this trailer, which means you can get a legal t payload of 30 tons, which is pretty good going. Well, I thought so. And when you compare that to the bigger cabs on the market, which I think, I could be wrong, but I think like the big Scandi V8, I think you can get about 28 tonne on, and I don't think you can get much more, even with quite a light trailer. When you pay by the tonne, that's a hell of a difference. I'm sure I've rattled on about that before, because I rattle on a load of old rubbish anyway. A load of old squit, as they say around Suffolk. And it's nice to be in a different truck today without us. The sensors have basically gone in that other one, which is why it's constantly going off telling me there's a tilt warning. So I took it around the workshop. And uh, the, the regular driver's back on it today. They had a bit of an adjustment, made it slightly better, but uh, thankfully I haven't, <laughs> haven't heard that once today. This is quite a busy railway line. Fingers crossed, we're all right. And here we are. Oh. I'll have to call you back. I'm now about to go and tip. Righto. Alright, ta-da! Right. Reload on. Oh, crikey. At Wyndham. We're just outside Wyndham. See, uh, hopefully we won't meet anything on this little road. It's not very long, the bit I need, but typically coming down here, I met another Arctic. <laughs> Which was one of ours. So let's load up and head for home, and I'm off tomorrow, like I said earlier. So, uh, This is Old Buckingham where they have two wheel Tuesday, I think it is. Which gets really, really busy apparently. Perhaps I have to come and have a look at some point one day. Nice scenic drive through here, but 
that's not ideal for fully loaded truck. See how long the battery lasts. Well, a damp June keeps it all in tune. Certainly been that today. It's now Wednesday. Uh, didn't work Monday or Tuesday. We went to a gig Sunday night in Nottingham. So I had Monday off to come back from that and Tuesday I had a load of personal stuff to do. So back to work today. Just done a couple of burstons from a uh, from a mum -um, from Ipswich. And I've just been I'm at Raveningham now. Which is just outside Beckles, so not far away from home. And I've just loaded for tomorrow for Peterborough. So I head back and I think I'm changing track units. I think uh, just got to do something with a sensor on this one. Uh, but the moment I left home on my moped this morning for work, it started chucking it down with rain. It rained all morning. Then it stopped and it got really warm and I got to the farm. And just as we were about to start loading, the big black cloud came over, which you can sort of see now, and uh, deposited its load. So uh, we just it's like the cricket, just have to sit and wait, wait it out. So we just sort of waited five, ten minutes and uh, it kind of stopped. And I've got me load of skyscraper soft wheat on. Hopefully it's uh, going to be dry enough for me to ride my bike home without getting soaked and walk the dogs later. Famous last words. <laughs> so yeah, nice little run to Peterborough tomorrow. Don't know where it'll be after that, could be anywhere. And then Friday, whatever, don't care, uh, because it's in the CVRTC show at Gaydon which will probably have been and gone by the time this hits YouTube. But I'm going to be there for the whole weekend, really looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, if I get enough footage uh, tomorrow, then uh, that will finish this little one off and uh, won't be able to get it uploaded. Going to uh, do a podcast for Truck and Driver, I think, tonight as well with Dougie. We've been trying to do it for a couple of weeks and time has just haven't quite worked at all. So hopefully tonight will be the night. We shall see. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off before the battery goes completely flat and it doesn't save anything just in case that's how it works. And uh, I'll replace the battery for tomorrow. Well, a very good morning. Thursday. Uh, pooped already. <laughs> Our wonderful little dog decided to start barking at quarter, half past midnight this morning. I don't know why. She woke me up, so I went and told her to be quiet. Went back to bed. And five minutes later, she did the same thing again. So. Uh, my alarm went off at four o'clock, so uh, it well and truly interrupted me sleep. <laughs> so I was very impressed. <sighs> Never mind. So I'm kind of hoping when I get to Whitworths, 
if there's three or four in front of me, that'll be a result. So I just uh, shut my eyes for an hour. <laughs> well, I know what's going to happen, there's going to be nothing there, isn't there? You always guarantee it. Oh dear. Now. Ten, 10 to 7, so uh, yes, it's, it's about two, two and a quarter hours from the yard to here, roughly. Give or take, so two and a quarter, two and a half, depending on your run. Uh, and you got there's a bit of a toss up, really, it's between which way you go. You can either drop down the A14 and across. Which is what I've done. Um, because once you're on the A14, it's just, you know, sort of non stop. Or you can go across country, across up to Norwich A47, which is mostly single lane, a lot more roundabouts and a lot more faffing about, but it is shorter distance wise. I think if I've been running empty, I'd go across the 47, but loaded. I just drop down the A14 to just get on with it, sort of thing. So, uh, didn't get the podcast done. Dougie ended up being busy. So, we're going to try again tonight. <laughs> See if he's busy again. I peaked a bit too early popping this on. I thought it was a bit closer to the roundabout than what it was. Oh well. Uh, I tell you what, radio DJs, I think they do quite well to talk. I don't know, let's say, how long they often do? Three hours, four hours, two hours, however long. But in between records, constantly talking, non stop, and keeping you keeping your interest. That's quite a, um, quite a mean feat, really, I think. Could be that, or could just be the fact that most of it's outer garbage. I'll let you decide which is which. There's one going on in front of me. <laughs> Unless he's really early for a... My booking time is from six till half nine, I think it is. So that's like delivery slot one. So if he's delivery slot two, for argument's sake, he's early and I'll go in front of him. Delivery slot one. I get a little break. And look at that. There's there's no other trucks here. <laughs> Could be one on the sampler though. We'll go around the other way. Oh. 
So my collection is from a small village called Sutton. Near Ely, not far from, not far from Ely really. So uh looks like quite a quite an interesting one to get into by the sound of it. So, so down here, just past the Checkers pub. See the pub. There's the pub, buddy. Not that one. Lodge Lane.
so this must be the driveway here. That's number 104. Love an egg. A bit small here, isn't it? It's going to be a lot more fun getting out loaded. <laughs> uh, there we go. It's all part of the adventure. Out of this one. <laughs> 